can't believe that. Ma You're OK, Mavis? No. Why are you nervous? I've had hypnotism last night to come here. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I have it every day. Why well, did you... Did it work? No, I don't think so. I'm terribly nervous. But Why not, are you scared? Well, I love, the, I love the fact that they cheered. And oh, they that's knew lovely. Me. But I just feel I'm forgotten, cos when I meet people on the road sometimes, they say, didn't you used to be Mavis Nicholson? <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm off now, I'm Kim Novak. <laughs> <laughs> Mavis, it's lovely to see you, it really is, because there's a story here. In 1992, I read a book, I read this book, Martha, Jane and Me, and these were the days when I was a nice person and I used to write to the authors and say, thank you for a lovely read. And it, this was such a lovely read. And it opened up a can of worms for me, you know, from my own childhood. But you know, it, what was funny about that letter of yours, I didn't know it was you. Yeah. It was P. O'Grady, right? right? Yeah. And I used to go round the country saying, the first letter I've got since I've written this book was from a chap called P. O'Grady. <laughs> and I said, and it's such a lovely, lovely letter, because you said you laughed, you cried, and that it had wiped away the cobwebs of your own childhood and brought the sunshine in. Yeah, yeah. Those were your words. Yeah, yeah. And I loved that letter, because, you know, it was so... I was so thrilled to be asked to write that book anyway. Yeah. But then to get your letter first like that, was magic. Oh, I meant it. No. And then, but then, ten years later, yeah. I'm doing maybe I'm doing an interview in a hotel room. In comes Mavis, and, I, and here we are, ten years down the line again. And then I said to you, this chap P. O. Gray, uh, and then it dawned on me. Do you remember? I said, Paul O'Grady, yeah. it was you. But I love Martha Jane because she's such a formidable matriarch. And, and she, let's face it, she had a tough life, didn't she? She had a tough life, but she was very bitter. That yeah. was the awful part of yeah. it. And she, she was fine when she thought she could have me all to herself. Yeah, yeah. And she did. Yeah. Because when my mother and my mother had twins, uh, six years after me, and I was the apple of her eye until then, and she never told me she was having babies. I just, no. And they came home, two babies, and me, spoilt. Yeah. And suddenly, I had to leave my mother and father's bedroom, we were very overcrowded, and sleep in Martha Jane's bed. Yeah. And I remember the first night I was in that bed, I was, I was lying near the door. I didn't like it, didn't, yeah. you know, big bed, feather bed. And Martha said, move over. She said, you've warmed that up nicely for me. You get into the cold bit. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the other thing she did was to take off her corset that first night. And there was my grandmother looking quite a trim woman, and suddenly... <laughs> off came the Spirella. Spirella. And the dangling, so, you know, <laughs> suspenders clanging against the chair. And off she came, and out <laughs> came Martha Jane. I've never been so astonished in my life. <laughs> what was Britain Ferry like? Cos I know they've built a bridge now, haven't they, across? Mm. And probably poor old Britain Ferry has been decimated, has it? Well, Britain Ferry has always been decimated, has I it? think, yeah. yes. You yeah. know, it's a pretty poor place. Yeah. And they used to flood down in Louther Street and everybody's possessions were... You know, we had a Louther Street as well. You had a Louther yeah, Street. Yeah, yeah. We, all working class areas have got a Louther uh, Street, haven't they? <laughs> haven't they? they haven't they? Mean, <laughs> there's no doubt about it. Lousy but, Louther, awesome schools. <laughs> <laughs> Where the bugs were, clogs, no comments. <laughs> <laughs> but we had bags in our mattress. Oh. And Martha Jane used to, I used to wake up and see her with a, to a torch getting out the bags on the wall. Ooh. But everybody, every working class home had bag bugs, didn't I know. they? Cockroach roaches under the wallpaper. Yes. And, Oh, manner of horrors. But we couldn't admit it then, though, could we? No, no. You can no. say it now. Say it now. Because you haven't got any now, have you? Oh, well... <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I wake up and the beds move from the wall. <laughs> and here underneath the bed, hi-ho, <laughs> as I'm arching. <laughs> no, we don't now, thank heavens. Things have improved so much. Did you ever know when you were a child that you might be someone? No. Really? No, 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 no idea. I, I did. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. No, I had no ambition. See, I'm jealous there. I wish, I wish yeah, I had... Yeah, but I didn't have ambition when I got to, you know, I, I, everything happened to me accidentally. I'm, I'm me. And yeah. you. I just drifted into things, yeah. did you? I, I yeah. did, did you have a game plan when you left school, did you say? I wanted to be a teacher. Yeah. But I didn't become a teacher because I went, walked out of my uh, finals degree. I wanted to be a burlesque stripper, but that... <laughs> 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 I'm serious, I saw a gypsy. That's why I was thrown off the altar at St Joseph's, my behaviour with the thermal during 11 o'clock mass. Honestly, man. <laughs> but now, this lady, I have to explain, before she arrived, daytime television was illegal. That's right, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, it was. Why was it illegal? It was just. 
Well, there was no daytime telly, but when was it? When did it come in? When did daytime telly come in? 69 or 70. 69 or 70. I remember that card with a cat, and they used to have the windmill after Andy Pandy. I was a bit after that. You were. Because Jeremy Isaacs decided to open up afternoon telly to women. Yeah. Because no, not many women were on telly. Yeah, that's right. Or even yeah. radio. They said the mic didn't suit their voice. A bit of misogyny there. Uh, I think, I think so, yeah, don't you? Yeah, 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 I know. But who were your favourite stars who you interviewed? Uh, a chap called Paul O'Grady. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I don't know. I always liked the last one, if yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. But, I mean... And I can't believe I've interviewed so many people, though, you know, like Elizabeth Taylor know, or Liberace. I and, you know, but g good writers, Maya Angelou. Yeah, lovely. Brilliant. Well, the cage bed scenes. And, yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And also, um, Mrs. Kennedy, you know, the mother of the... Oh, Rose Kennedy. Yeah. yeah. Now, she was startling. Yeah. But that was a, ter ter a terrifying interview to start off with. Yeah. Because she came in and said, I don't want any fuss and I, I don't want to know any questions. I've been asked all the questions in the world. I, I don't want to know it. You, oh, you, you know, yeah. Great. So I thought, yeah. oh, 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 you know, yeah. like that. And then she came into the studio. She said, I don't want to go to be made up. I've got enough makeup on. And so she sat down and she said, what do you think I look like? You see, like that. So I took my, I said, well, you've got a blob of marmalade on your um, skirt. So we, let's get that off. So we got that off. And then she said, anything else, madam? <laughs> and I said, you've got a snag in your stocking. <laughs> And I said, what do you, if you could just put your foot behind the other one, you'll be all right, you won't see it. Anything else, madam? And I said, well, I don't think your little cardi suits your dress. <laughs> and so I went over to this little cardi and took it off. Now, inside that cardi was her name before she was married. It was her school cardi, her comfort blanket. <laughs> Oh, so that's what that. So Rose, Ke this formidable woman, woman. Rose Kennedy, yeah, wore a, there she was with, with her that. little comfort blanket around her. And I said, "Oh, well, don't take it." Off. Yeah, she said, "If you say so, madam." She said, "I will take it off, and I'm going to do a damn good interview for you." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think she thought that if I had courage enough to tell her those three things, that she, did it. She was it, in it actually, mel I mean, it really did get us going. You yeah, know, it was wonderful. Now, Mavis <laughs> writes. She writes. She's the agony aunt for the oldie magazine. So if you've got any problems, you know, so write it. Maybe it's, what's the up? strangest letter you've ever had? Do you really? I'd love to. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, the strangest letter was, dear Mavis, can you advise me because I've got a sexual edge implement. Uh, <laughs> oh. Uh, Can't I say the word? A, 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 vi no. a vi thing that vibrates. That's correct. It yeah. It's better for you to say. Yeah. It. yeah. Better for you. And I'm very worried because if. Um, I die suddenly, and I'm quite... I'm getting on now, and I'm in my 80s. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, mi it, might, it might mean that, um, that my grandchildren will find it. <laughs> I promised my granddaughter in the audience that it's not me. <laughs> I'm not 80 yet. <laughs> not quite. And so I rang up... What's the name of the big sec... Well, you're perhaps... Anne uh, Somers. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Isn't it know, funny, mate? You know, Bert knew that like you that. No, they knew straight to that. <laughs> now, why did Bert know that, mate? I know. He knew it like that. Yeah. And when I rang up and Kevin answered and said he was going to help me, what could he help me with? And I explained that I was an agony aunt on the oldie and he said, what, the what? The, what? the oldie? Never heard of it. I said, it's a magazine. <laughs> Richard Ingram's Private Eye. He edits it. Never heard of Private Eye, he said. Oh, I said, OK, Kev, give in. I'm not a dirty old woman, but believe it if you want to. <laughs> what is there that I can um, suggest to a reader that doesn't look very phallic? <laughs> And he said, the rampant rabbit, $12.99. And, and the other one, which only looks like, like a lipstick, a pocket pleaser. <laughs> and Richard Ingram swore that I had actually written that. I did not. It's the truth. That was the truth. That was the truth. Well, now you know, folks, OK? <laughs> so if you're worried about the grandchildren opening the bedside drawer, you know what to do. <laughs> Pop a rabbit in. That's it. <laughs> Mavis, it's been a real treat to speak to you again. And we have to keep in touch, yeah? Indeed. And please come back to television. You've been away too long. <laughs> no, you have. We need you. Ladies and gentlemen, please, Mavis Nicholson, come on.